Welcome to the Black Rock Desert, the iconic desert where they hold the Burning Man Festival here in northwestern Nevada, and the previous site of the Yellowstone Hotspot. You see, this area is one of the most volcanically interesting areas anywhere in the U.S., and also the site of an ancient lake known as Lake Lahati. So today we're going to check out the volcanic past and the intriguing geology of the Black Rock Desert and the High Rock region. Let's start our journey here at Black Rock Point. See, Black Rock Point stands out because of its dark black color, which is why it got its name. See, this point is actually 250 million year old rock that came from an ancient island chain that was full of a volcanic rock called andesite. When that volcanic chain eventually was sloughed off onto the North American continent when the oceanic plate bearing it subducted, it collided with a sea that was shallow and full of limestone. This caused the andesite and the limestone to fuse together into one rock called andesitic limestone, which I'm holding right here in my hand. Absolutely beautiful right here, but let's move on. The rock was part of the Sonoma Orogeny, a mountain building event that took place around 250 million years ago, where multiple chains of volcanic islands were sloughed off onto the North American continent, which we call accretion in the geology world. Volcanic island chains sit on oceanic plates. Plates are regions of Earth's upper layer known as the crust, which move around separate from one another, driven by complex, deep currents in the inner part of the Earth known as the mantle. These plates can then subduct under continental plates. The island chains sitting on top then accrete onto the continent that their host oceanic plate subducts underneath. At the time of the Sonoma, Nevada was actually along the coastline of North America, which was surrounded by shallow limestone-rich seas. Following the accretion and mixing of andesite volcanic rock from the chains and the limestone from the seas, multiple more mountain building events took place over the following millions of years and several more island chains accreted onto North America and Nevada eventually became geographically positioned close to where it is in the modern day. Now we need to talk about hotspots and how the absolutely massive hotspot that now feeds the wonderful volcanism in Yellowstone used to be in the northwestern Nevada region around 17 to 15.5 million years ago. Hotspots form when especially hot regions in the inner part of the Earth called the mantle cause huge masses of buoyant magma to rise up all the way to the region just below the crust, which essentially acts as a steady flow of fuel which feeds volcanism. These hotspots stay stationary as Earth's tectonic plates migrate and shift. A good example of this is Hawaii. Hawaii was created by a hotspot. As the oceanic plate containing Hawaii has begun shifting to the northwest, new volcanoes have sprouted up in the same fixed point, but the shifting plate gives the illusion of shifting magma. It is theorized that the Yellowstone hotspot is 17 million years old, but new evidence under investigation suggests that it might have formed way earlier and off the coast of North America. We are at the site of a massive flood. And I'm not talking about a water flood, I'm talking about a lava flood. You see behind me, there is columnar basalt. Basalt is a very, very common extrusive volcanic rock. And it came out in mass in this area around 16 million years ago. You see fractures that formed in the earth acted like channels, transporting the magma from the previously located Yellowstone hotspot and it brought all that magma to the surface as these big floods of lava that in some cases were up to 6,000 feet thick. And this formed the basalt flows that covered most of the Pacific Northwest in the interior part behind the Cascades. Usually hotspots are connected to crustal regions of Earth through relatively narrow pathways, which channel the magma they produce up into a relatively contained area. But 16 to 17 million years ago, a huge glob of magma rose from the Yellowstone hotspot and found its way through several cracks in the Earth's crust. This caused an absolutely massive amount of lava 
to ooze out onto the Earth's surface, cooling to form a rock known as basalt. There was an estimated 50 to 90,000 cubic miles of the stuff that oozed out of Earth in this time period. Following this, the Yellowstone hotspot went back to its regularly scheduled program. It funneled magma into a specific narrow region. The regions that ended up over this funnel hosted large volcanic complexes, which exploded to form huge craters in the ground called calderas. This giant area that I'm in might look unassuming, but I'm actually in a giant caldera right now that was formed from an eruption that happened around 16 million years ago when the Yellowstone hotspot used to be in this area. You see, you can find all sorts of extrusive igneous rocks in this area, like obsidian and rhyolite. The North American plate is moving southwest, which means that the Yellowstone hotspot began seemingly migrating to the northeast, although like we discussed earlier, it's sitting in the same spot and just looks like it's shifting because the plate is moving over it. So as volcanism shifted, a huge path of calderas and rhyolite deposits was left in its wake. Right now, I'm in one of the many canyons that dots the High Rock region of Nevada, here in the northwestern part of the state. Behind me, you can see one of the quintessential rocks of the area, rhyolite. You see, rhyolite is an extrusive igneous rock, so it comes out during eruptions and explosive episodes. And there was a lot of eruptions going on at the time. 8,300 square kilometers of the stuff was laid down from here all the way into parts of Washington. And in some areas, these deposits can be thousands of feet thick. The ash from these eruptions did more than just deposit rocks. It also buried the previous nature of the region, encasing it. This is a video that the audio failed on, but I was essentially explaining how petrified wood which is ancient wood that has been encased in sediment and replaced with minerals over time, can be found all throughout the High Rock region. It is a beautiful reminder of the once vibrant and lush region that used to exist here. Following the volcanism in the region, the subduction of an oceanic plate at the time called the Farallon eventually gave birth to the San Andreas Fault in California, a huge fracture in Earth which is dragging parts of California to the northwest while the rest of North America continues on its southwest trajectory. This caused a massive amount of stress which began extending the crust in a huge region of western North America, which forms several more faults, which you can learn about in my Great Basin video. We're here at Black Rock Point Hot Springs, and this hot spring is here because of the faults that are in this area. You see, faults sort of act like highways, bringing up heat from underground magma which warms underground water in the water table and brings it out in the form of hot springs and in some cases like Yellowstone geysers. So this is a really incredible example and you can even see some steam coming off of it. I mean, this thing is hot. These faults cause mountains to form which uplifted areas in the region. The uplift exposed a lot of the older rock that we talked about near the beginning of this video, and also created the perfect containment area for the giant Lake Lahontan that formed in the region. Lake Lahontan was formed due to melting from glaciation from the last ice age. It was at its peak only a mere 13,000 years ago. The lake is mostly extinct today, leaving behind dry lake beds called playas, like the one in this video that the famous Burning Man is held on. That concludes our journey of the amazing geologic past of this wonderful corner of Northwest Nevada. Thank you so much for watching the video. Be sure to like and subscribe if you enjoyed it, and remember that new videos are coming out every two weeks. So again, thank you for watching.